Hi. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily, I'm a third year foundation phase student teacher and today we are going to talk all about the maths caps documents. Let's start off with the grade R1. So this is one thing that I wish I knew in first year was that this caps document that is so nice and thick is just grade R maths which I had no idea about um, until the end of first year which is so dumb. Um, but I should have actually known that because it literally says it on the front cover. But um, nonetheless, here we are. So let's start off by going through that. Again, it just starts off with the table of contents and lets you know um, about everything. It has all the information, all the overviews, oversights. Again, it has all the tables of the allocation times and stuff like that. It gives you an introduction of what maths is, what is expected of you, um, what the uh, specific goals and stuff are of maths. Um, and then we go into the maths. Maths has different areas, um, if I could put it like that. So, like I said, I have a Afrikaans one. So in Afrikaans, it's called the focus op in it areas. And English basically would translate to being the focus point of context areas of what you would be doing. So what we do in maths is um, numbers, of course. Um, we do patterns. Um, we do forms and shapes and stuff like that. I'm not actually 100% sure of like what exactly that's called. We do data handling. Which is lots of fun. I really do like the maths. Um, it is quite fun. What I love about the Great R Maths document is that it actually gives you a list on page 17. It gives you a list of materials that you might need to give a maths lesson, um, which is very, very helpful. So then it actually does still give you an overview of grade R 1, 2 and 3 um, and what you'll be talking about under specific things. So the thing about maths is that referencing is always a little bit more difficult. And as you can see here are like these tables here, you need to reference these tables and then later on when it becomes super specific in your referencing. And I'll show you what that means when I actually get to the part where we start under term one um, for just grade R, if that is going to come at any point. Um, here we go. So let's see. So each um, content piece of content area has a number. So it's 1.1 or it starts one through to however many numbers but then under it has subdivisions as well i feel like i'm looking down the whole time i'm sorry i'm just trying to figure this out quickly here we go so i'm going to move just a tad closer so that you can maybe just see this um this is how the very first page looks and you'll see it says uh, grade one term one and this is basically orientation. And part of grade R is that they learn how to go according to a routine. So a lot of it will be about routines and stuff like that. It also tells you which week. So this is week one. Um, this is the very, very beginning of where you'll start. And what I love about the maths document, especially for referencing, makes it really, really easy. And like I said, you'll need to reference this page. But then you'll need to go see in the front of the book where you'll find this as well. So this is time. Um, where they talk about their daily program and only grade R's have a daily program so this is very specific to grade R it's not an overall of what you'll do um, in say grade 1, 2 and 3 and I find that the grade 1, 2 and 3 work although increasing in complexity during the um, as the grades get higher they do kind of have a correlation with one another and they are kind of more or less the same type of work so if you're doing plus sums you're going to do plus sums all the way to grade three um but with grade r it's very specific to their needs basically so um yeah it basically works exactly the same as any other caps document it has the subdivisions of the terms but then it also has subdivisions of what you need to do during the term and this tells you exactly what um 
what you what you are doing in week one to week 10 say now for first term or week 12 or whatever it is um, it literally gives you a week layout of what you need to do in that week that you'll then obviously divide to your desire how you would do it um, but what I like about it is it gives you notes of explaining how to teach the maths or how you could teach the maths and introduce it it also gives you a list of um, materials or resources that you can use to give that lesson so if you are doing a daily program it will tell you that um, you will use your daily program in a picture format which is really really great and then it actually gives you a time division as well so how much time you need to, to be using per topic that is the word a topic so if i go on um to over here for example um this is the counting of objects it then gives you a little diagram it gives you a nice explanation of what exactly they mean by counting objects it will then tell you okay you need bottle caps for instance um and that the time or whatever that you needed is you need one day so one day does not mean 24 hours it means one math lesson so um math lessons as far as i know for grade r is obviously a lot shorter but for grade one they are up to 90 minutes and that is something that i learned in practical this year is that a maths lesson is 90 minutes long and I'm not sure if anyone else has had this experience. When I first heard that it was 90 minutes, I was like, oh my goodness, I don't think I can fill up a whole 90 minutes until I started giving the lesson. You'll realize that you probably need more than 90 minutes to do maths, but unfortunately we can't have 90 minutes to do maths. So um, maths for um the week for one week of maths for grade r is seven hours so you need to divide seven by five um which is actually quite a lot so but you'll find that it will still feel like it's not enough um or that's how i found it was so this whole big book of i think how many pages is it it is 270 pages it's just grade R work. This is a lot of work that they need to cover um, in just grade R. But I must say, I feel like it's more than enough time and you do happen to have it. So let's move on to grade 1, 2 and 3. Um, I have four documents here because I did not have a big binder like that. And also this document is a whopping 363 pages, which is a lot oh no wait i was wrong it's more than that it is 440 pages so i don't think any binder was going to be big enough for that so what i did was i've split them so i started off with this basically being the introduction where it gives an overview of all the grades for each term and each topic um, that's just basically what this CAPS document is. It also starts off with giving a nice explanation and an overview and whatever and time allocations and etc etc. But it's just basically an overview of grade uh, 1, 2 and 3 under all four terms. Then I've gone and divided it under grade 1, grade 2 and grade 3 which is this last one. Do you like my front cover? Um, I just MacGyvered a front cover. Um, because I didn't, I had actually printed the cover page twice. I can't remember why, but I printed it twice. But anyway, um, that's also besides the point. Um, so let's just get right into it. From the get-go, again, it just starts off with grade one, term one. And this is exactly what you'll be teaching is... Um, well, some of it's actually in the introduction, but this is the topic of um, patterns, functions, and algebra. And when I saw algebra, I was like, oh my goodness, why are we teaching grade two's algebra, well, grade one's algebra now? But it's not, it's a, it's a form of, it's just a form of maths. You don't actually call it that. I don't know, I'm just, I feel like I'm babbling on. But I do hope this video does help. Um, all of the CAPS documents are basically the same. Once you see it in person or once you see it in front of you, um, it will make a lot more sense. So just a quick recap of how it basically works is 
you have four terms in the year and let's just take grade one as an example if you are a grade one teacher you have four terms in the year and that means that you have four terms worth of work to cover and each week for grade one you need 10 hours of maths that you have done um but i find it easier to work in 90 minute increments and i find that okay 90 minutes sounds long but i'll get into how you divide the lesson in just a few seconds just bear with me um and then under these four um four terms you get topics that you need to teach and they are the same topics every term except that the work becomes more complex and what i like about the maths caps documents like i said before is it gives you a it gives you the topic it then gives you an explanation of what you need to do under that topic and it tells you at what like say now for example grade ones have to be able to count till 20 by the end of term one so it will tell you in the um, explanation that they need to be able to count to 20 and that doesn't mean in the first week that obviously means by the end of term one um because you obviously do it like over a period of time the way that i've seen it being done is that say now we're working with the concept of time um you will work with time over two weeks so that is 20 hours of working with just the topic of time and then you'll roll over and say work with mass and um so that is how you'll divide it within the 12 weeks is that you'll take one topic and divide it into two weeks or even three weeks depending on how long it takes you and depending on how much content needs to be covered and depending on your work method remember each teacher is individual and um can choose how they want to do it the maths lesson itself i said 90 minutes right 90 minutes is a lot and um it needs to all touch on the same subject obviously but basically the 90 minutes is divided very easily you'll start off with basically taking 20 minutes of just doing classwork all together um <clears throat> where you're doing you'll do a little bit of warm-up of like sums and counting and make it fun and song and and stuff like that make it interesting get them into it you'll then do some practical work um you can also divide this into time increments of your desire and how your learners what their level of concentration is what their level of understanding is of the subject um so that is completely and entirely up to you but this is how i was taught and this is how i found that it worked in practical um you'll then take some time to do some con con concrete work at the tables you'll do plus sums and but you'll do using beads and beans and whatever else and then you'll take quite a bit of time in doing mat work um, so you'll call the first group to the carpet and then you'll do the little activity there while the rest of the class you need to keep busy so you need to have activities that keep them busy as well um, at that point in time in the beginning of the grade one year it's going to be a little bit difficult because they aren't used to the formal school setting so they don't really know how to keep themselves busy but I find that later on in the year and um, this is from my experience this is firsthand what I've seen happen is that later on even in the second term it's still a bit mm, yeah. but by the third and fourth term they know how to keep themselves busy so the extra independent activities that you need to do is not as many but you need to obviously have the same lesson for the kids that are on the mat so but the thing is that you will then divide them it's the same as reading is you divide them into groups according to their ability and their understanding and their level of comprehension if i could put it that way their level of understanding so if your strongest group say now group one is your strongest group they can already count till 20 so you will do more challenging sums with them and stuff like that but then you get your lower group say now group four where they struggle a bit with the concept of counting objects you will then probably only go up to maybe the number 12 but that's obviously up to you and that is that is something that your learners will kind of decide for you i guess in a way they will because you just need to feed off of what they are giving you if that makes sense but anyway 
that's how you read the maths caps document um and a little bit about a maths lesson um i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please share it with a friend and i'll see you all in the next video and don't forget to like and subscribe bye